Ladies and gentlemen, who am I kidding? Hackers. Hackers. Try it, ladies and gentlemen, because wrong crowd. Seems like the loudest noise coming from my red shirts. Staff. It's so hard to find good staff, but you get what you pay for. All right. So, closing ceremonies is about me saying thank you guys for showing up, thanking the speakers very much for coming through and for sharing their research with us. Um, some phenomenal research. I can't wait to see the videos because I didn't see many of the talks. So I really hope that we got everything on film. Give some thumbs up from the back. Okay. It, it'll be fine. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for coming again this year. Um, there were a lot more of you than there have been previously. And it seemed to work quite well having two different rooms. Um, the problem is we weren't always sure which rooms we needed to fill. And we actually probably need two rooms this size for next year. So potentially we'll be looking for new locations next year. Um, so if you have any ideas, feel free to put your hand up and come chat to me or come find me at Oaks Coffee or something afterwards, and we'll, we'll work something out. Um, thank you very much for coming. I have some prizes to give away, and I have some winners to, who already are happy because they were literal boxes that people break into. Um, do we have somebody from MTN here? You want to come chat or shake hands with the people that, uh, that managed to break into the boxes? We'll start with the badge challenges. Um, and there were two. One was a, <laughs> one was supposed to be a digital and analog challenge. Um, but being hackers and finding other ways in is what happens. Um, so should we start with that? I'm looking for someone to wave. Yes. Come yeah, on. The RF one. So Mike, Mike will give a quick rundown as to what was supposed to happen. And then, then, and then our winner will come up and tell you what actually happened and uh, show you what they found inside the box. And then MTN will shake a hand, I guess. Okay, it's just a laptop. So um, this is the indestructible uh, plutonium box. And um, you can only get in th into it through RF hacking, right? And unfortunately, that's not true. So <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, so basically, what happened was uh, I think we tested it a little bit too hard. So once the locks were off, and uh, this thing got wiggled around a bit too much, I don't know. Um, you could just open it. So um, well, with a bit of force. Uh, there you are. <laughs> so congratulations. Oh, there's a, a handshake. Also, and Andrew Mack tried really hard, and he got nowhere. <laughs> next, next year, Android devices, I guess. <laughs> yeah, too, completely insecure and patchable, but rootable, and therefore we can do with them what we like. Um, there, there are two more. There are two more challenges that MTN responsible for. So I'm going to keep you up here for a bit. The second challenge was the mechanical only challenge. And there were two locks to pick to open a box. Just two locks on a box. Where is the successful candidate? Come down here. Where is the box? So there are always two ways into everything. Every person in this room knows that. You'll notice that the lock that's impossible to pick is still on the case. It's because there's other ways into the box. Popped it open.
not the same key. Just 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 be clear. It it would have been even funnier if he'd actually used the key for the padlock to do that. But I check my pockets and I still have it. I, I do want to I, I, – quick quick shout out to Telspace who provided all the locks to uh, Oaks Coffee. Um, those locks will be at Oaks Coffee if you're trying if you want to try and pick that lock. Feel free to bring come come down to Oaks Coffee. We will have them there, and we'll bring picks and hope you'll get in. Anyway, what what did you have in the box? Then the last challenge, where's Dale? The last challenge is the one we don't actually know who the winner is yet. Or at least I don't. Uh, okay, so the, the last challenge was who's got the best blinky light. Um, we decided that the person who spent the most, probably the most hours coding one, and who's got the best animation, because I know, because both Ross and I tried to do this animation, we couldn't quite get it right. Andrew Mack. <laughs> so he managed to code snake <laughs> on his badge, which you have to admit. There we go. Okay, that was three of the four challenges we had with prizes today. Where I'm looking for end close. What did you win, Andrew? <laughs> A bag with something in it. Headphones. Okay. Where's end close? Right here. Okay. So. How many of you guys actually took part in the CF? Okay. Well, not um, we had two successful uh, captures of the flag. Um, surprising results here. Uh, in second place with 725,000 events. Frank. Sorry, Frank. Where's Frank? Sorry, Frank. You don't win anything. Uh, your colleague Charlie Smith, however, with 333 events, uh, did win. So come on up. Well done. And we got a Google Home here. Um, I'm hoping they're putting this in the Telspace office. I, I I don't know if there's microphones in here or not. I don't know. <laughs> Cheers. And we're gonna we're gonna walk through the the capture the flag if anyone wants to have a look at uh, one of the paths uh, uh, to capture the flag. So uh, join us. We're gonna do that uh, just after the ceremony is done. Um, somebody who needs to be telling me. What, oh, right. I have two more things that I need to talk about before I can let you guys go. Uh, the first is we have a rite of passage. Um, I don't know if. Everyone knows what that's about. Um, if you don't, what it is about is that someone, a student in South Africa, we try and get money together for them to, ten, to send them over or take them over with us to DEF CON and Black Hat in Las Vegas or DEF CON and B-Sides Las Vegas every year. They get to work at B-Sides Las Vegas and try and pick up some of the ways that conferences run overseas. Um, that person ends up interning for the B-Sides organization in Cape Town for the course of a year in payment for that trip. Um, and then when they come back, they have to pass on that knowledge to somebody else. The idea is that I won't be the one standing up here and that some of the grayer bearded people also won't have to keep doing this forever and that we end up with a brand new group of people who can, who can take on the conference and take it to the next place. Um, unfortunately, well, fortunately, the choice for that person was unanimous this year. So it's a volunteer who completely gave his heart and soul to making B-sides happen who probably most of you didn't see because you spent most of the time soldering badges, unless you have a badge or your badge was broken and you ended up back in the badge room because he pretty much got stuck there. Um, 
Yes. He is uh, well known to our community. I've got his first name. This is terrible. <laughs> Philip. Philip Goyson, who, um, yeah, he's at the airport. He's flying. Where is he going to? Ah, uh, he's at the cluster competition. Anyway, so he will be joining us, at, or joining those of us who are going through to DEF CON anyway um, next year. And that's being paid for by those of you who bought badges, those of you who contributed to the, the Rite of Passage uh, donation fund, to a bunch of uh, community members who put money in themselves um, to help accommodate and give him food, etc. Besides, Las Vegas is actually paying for his hotel room because they have an entire hotel that they, uh, they have for the, the duration of the conference. So they're going to put him up in the hotel room. He will have to work there in order to earn that hotel room, however. And uh, those of you who've done that know how hard that can be. It's a lot of fun. We should have actually had you do at least a lightning talk on what it was like. Yeah. So do you guys want to hear what B-Sides Las Vegas was like? Can I give him five minutes for that? Come on up here. So, so we can do Q&A as well. Um, <laughs> he was fortunate enough to win Rite of Passage last year. He was our guinea pig test subject. And we managed to bring him back mostly in one piece. Um, so we figured we'd try it again. It's true. It has been a few months. Anyway, I'm going to hand you this. Cool. Um, put me on the spot a bit. I'm not so good at this speaking thing. Um, yeah, so I was lucky enough to be chosen for Rite of Passage last year, um, which was quite daunting because they were like, cool, here are our tickets. Be at the airport, and we'll meet you in Vegas somewhere. So <laughs> it was a lot of... Um, Don't worry, there's a room. Yeah. Well, before B-Sides, Las Vegas um, kindly decided to sponsor the room. It was more a case of there will be a couch in someone's hotel room somewhere, maybe. Um, there were a couple of jokes about um, sleeping under the bridge um, somewhere. It's pretty warm in Vegas, so I guess that's, that's okay. But I did pack a blanket just in case. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was quite scary um, to have to get to Vegas by myself. I haven't hadn't traveled to overseas alone before, so that was interesting. Um, yeah, I got straight into, because of other commitments, I basically landed and then started working. So, um, yeah, it was a lot of time and a lot of hard work running around doing stuff and being helpful. Um, quite overwhelming how many people are there. Um, like, I feel like this is a biggish conference, but apparently I don't know anything, because, um, yeah, that's a biggish conference. Um, yeah, and it was really cool working with the B-Size people, super friendly, um, the community is really awesome over there. Um, from then, luckily, I got to stay in the hotel. I also, like, it was just overwhelming. There was so much stuff going on. I didn't realize that there was a shuttle going from Tuscany to Caesar's Palace until about two days in, so I was walking every day. Um, the shuttle drove past me at least two or three times each time I walked, so that was interesting. So I picked up a lot of stuff about um, just surviving in Vegas and DEF CON and all that kind of stuff, but also about how the conference is run, what happens behind the scenes, how difficult the things that aren't even problems here become when you get that big. Like, logistics and stuff just get crazy. Um, and yeah, it was enlightening. And DEF CON was amazing. Um, luckily, I was just, I wasn't working, so I had time to just meet people and try challenges and explore rooms and just go wild. Um, it took a while for me to not get lost in Caesar's Palace because it's enormous. Um, but it was amazing that, you know, there was nothing that you could be interested in that was vaguely related where you wouldn't find a whole group of people working on the same stuff that knew a whole bunch more than you did. Um, and everyone's super friendly and keen to answer questions most of the time. Um, yeah, and they didn't let me die, which was nice. Um, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, it was awesome. So thank you, Grant, for largely driving the initiative and other people who contributed, and Mike for mostly babysitting and making sure I, I got back home from alive. Um, yeah, and all the sponsors. 
I did put a dollar in a gambling machine, but just because I had to do it, because I was in Vegas. Um, I got, no, I got nothing back. <laughs> Yeah, so I got, I put a dollar in and 66 cents was used for the numbers to go and not match up at all. And then I got 22 cents back in a bond note. Um, so that was cool. But yeah, it was really awesome and I'm really stoked for Philip and hopefully I will also be joining this year so I can, um, yeah, help continue the initiative and show him where to go and yeah, what to do for a complete noob in, in Vegas. So yeah, thanks to everyone who helped make it possible. Um, so, a bunch of you made that possible. Uh, on the website this year, you could buy tickets to come to B-Sides. You could buy badges, which are these things around your neck. And you could also give donations. Thanks, Andrew Mack. Appreciate the donation. Um, and for every donation, your name ended up going into this well-built envelope, um, which we printed out uh, using Dimension Data stuff uh, very quickly. Wireless printers are great. Um, I'm sure they would have let us if they'd been here. Any die data people in the room? Um, so I'm going to draw a couple of names out of here. We have uh, some B-Sides branded uh, memory sticks, which I'm sure you all use, um, and they're kind of cool. We actually gave these away to speakers last year in the hopes that those speakers would come back and talk and use them. I don't think we saw anybody with them this year. Did you guys see any flashing red lights and people pointing at stuff with pointers? Well, you could be doing that if you donated to uh, write a passage. Hopefully, it'll also encourage you to submit a talk for next year. Um, can I ask someone to come up and draw names out of this thing? You want to do it? I, did, do any of you actually remember donating to write a passage? Okay, I see a few of you. I hope that those are the names we drew. <laughs> Just grab a name out of there. Uh, by the way, these uh, these did not require you to give names, only email addresses. So, oh, Dan, where's Dan? There's Dan. Dan Wells. There we go. There you go, Dan. Thank you very much. Who's spinning? All right. Next one. Because now we're going to draw like 10 names, people who are not here. Mark. Where is Mark? Mark was here earlier. Mark first. Did he leave? Okay. Pity. When I test drew, I drew his name out as well. So he really has bad luck leaving now, because <laughs> the odds of drawing it again. Vickers, come on down. And last one. Look, there's one trying to climb up the side of the box. Richard, I saw you earlier. Where are you? Nope. Did he go? He's having the same bad luck as Mark then. Dwayne? Dwayne? Gone? This room was a lot fuller when we started this. Probably a lot fuller when we started the draw as well. One last try. This doesn't work. We're going to give it up as a bad. I have no idea that. G I L L E S P I E dot S W. Is that you? <laughs> I'm surprised that nobody else came up with that idea earlier today. Okay, um, the last thing I want to do is just thank everyone, my team. Um, we have a bunch of people wearing uh, teal this time around. 
hopefully we'll see a lot more of you guys wanting to participate in that way as volunteers. Um, volunteers worked really hard. All of you worked really hard in picking picking who we we're going to send to um, to DEFCON was a very hard choice because everyone did contribute as much as they could, and it was great. Um, and hopefully we'll see some of you wearing red next year as well. But come chat to me. If you want to get involved in B-Sides, please do. Have I forgotten anything? Looking at anyone wearing a red shirt? Have I forgotten a bunch of stuff? No. Okay. So, so drinks. Well, actually, let's start with after this is one of two things. Either you're going to play Hacker Jeopardy and lose against me. Where's Iron? Um, or you're going to go learn how you were supposed to. There's Iron hiding in the corner. Or you're going to go learn how you failed at the CTF or how you were supposed to participate if you didn't participate at all. If you didn't participate at all, I, shame on you. I wish I had. Because Google Home's awesome. Um, and after Hacker Jeopardy, uh, MWR are taking us out for drinks, those of you who want to stick around for that. Um, we're going across to the River Club. To the River Club. And yes, I didn't thank my team properly. Guys, I really, really appreciate your help. Um, without you, this would just be impossible to run. Uh, I think we did well this year. Um, I don't know what you guys thought. Cool. Then that's me done. So, Hacker Jeopardy here. CTF, how to walk through in the CTF room. Uh, strongly suggest that if you did attempt the CTF and failed and had no idea why, you go see how it was done. Martin, I'm sure you will put up a, an actual how-to online as well for everybody else to walk through. Perhaps create those VMs and somewhere store them for. Well, judging from the number of hits that you ended up with in that first scan, I, that's that's a lot of VMs. All right, Ian, right, I'm handing it over to you. It's all you now. Yes, sponsors. Yes, all of this couldn't happen without our sponsors. Um, I did thank most of you before. Um. Anyway, I, 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 I'm now a bit flustered. Read them off my back. Uh, this year, we put all the sponsors' names on the on the shirts. Um, all the sponsors that were uh, silver or high, or higher on the on the list. I was end up with a lot of sponsors. We had sponsors that weren't mentioned today, but they're they're up on the website, uh, who helped us in many many smaller ways. And I'd like to thank them because without them, there would be no. Well, there certainly wouldn't be a badge because we needed sponsor money to. Power of the badges this year. Thanks, Mike. Um, it's amazing how much money you can spend on building a badge. By you, I mean you. I think we're going to make shifting Mike build a badge next year. Anybody opposed to that idea of making the badge simpler? <laughs> Certainly nobody who's soldering. All right. Anyone up? 